What is the biggest beatdown you've seen in a UFC fight? Maybe it was watching Ilya Tapuria beat the wheels off of Josh Emmett and scoring a very rare 50-42 scorecard. Perhaps it was seeing Justin Gagey tormenting Tony Ferguson for four rounds and sending him into his seven fight losing streak. Maybe it was seeing Conor McGregor put his hands behind his back and proceeding to smash Eddie Alvarez in the second round for the UFC lightweight belt. Or maybe it's what happened the night of January 16th, 2021. This. This was the night Max Holloway came out in a rage and beat the absolute living breaks off of Calvin Cater. I mean, what were they thinking? There's a strong argument to be made that this fight should have ended in the fourth round. If a fighter is getting torn up by a bunch of lefts and rights, and is not doing anything to tear up his opponent with his lefts or rights, it's a TKO. But despite the calls to end the fight, and surprisingly, concern from Dana White, Herb Dean never stepped in. The fight continued until the end of the fifth. We got this notable line. And Max Holloway made his biggest contribution to his already impressive significant strike record. 445 significant strikes landed. That's a record, everyone. But not just for that year in the UFC, or even in featherweight history, but for the entire history of the UFC. And with that impressive performance to his resume, his significant strike record distanced itself from his other peers in the UFC, to a point where no other fighter, present or future, will come close to breaking it. This is a graph of UFC fighters' significant strikes landed over their careers. You'll see a bunch of familiar names in this graph. Here you see one of the greatest fighters of all time in GSP. Over here you see another GOAT in John Jones. Over here you see the people's champion, Sean Strickland. Volkanovski's over here. And way over here is Max Holloway. Yeah. The distance between Max Holloway and the next challenger to a significant strike record is over 1,200 strikes. You remember that impressive performance that Max laid out on Calvin Cater I talked about earlier? Yeah. Even if the next person holding the record has two of those performances, they still can't break the record. But let's entertain this idea even more. Let's assume Max Holloway just retired today and leaves behind the significant strike record. Angela Hill, who's the next contender for this record, has an average strike output of around 5.44 strikes landed per minute. Let's say she's scheduled to fight in only three round fights, and let's just say that she fights around three times a year, and takes all of those fights to a decision, which is something that she's been doing for the past four years. It would take Angela Hill over five years to catch up to Max Holloway's significant strike record. Or in other words, she would catch up to Max Holloway's record when she's 44 years old. And, when you're 44 years old, chances are, you're probably not going to be in the UFC anymore. Which brings up a point that I think many of us have forgotten about. Do you guys remember when Max Holloway fought Dustin Poirier? No, not that time. This time, 12 years ago, in Max Holloway's UFC debut. These future UFC Hall of Famers first met near the beginning of their careers, in the biggest stage of their careers. And how old were they? Well, Dustin Poirier was 23 years old, but Max Holloway, 20. Max was just 20 years old. Meaning, if you do the math, Max Holloway is currently just 32 years old, is still active in the UFC roster, and might even be in the prime years of his career. If you look at the stat leaders for significant strikes, it looks like this. But Frankie Edgar, Joanna Janjacek, and Donald Cerrone are all retired, meaning that their numbers will stay like this forever. So if you filter this list for current active fighters in the UFC, then you get this. And if we're truly searching for our next contender to overtake Max Holloway's significant strike record, you'd assume that they have to be younger than him, so that they have their prime years ahead of them to put on impressive performances. So if we take away the contenders that are older than Max Holloway, it looks like this. Yeah. Point being, there's very few young and active fighters in contention for this record. Okay, I know what you might be thinking. Doesn't this record mean Max Holloway is just some boring decision merchant? That he's been taking his opponents to the last round of every fight because his hands are made of pillows? And to this I say, you wouldn't be completely wrong. 
In fact, prior to his TKO win over the Korean Zombie in August of 2023, Max Holloway hasn't had a finish in over 5 years. His last 8 fights prior to the Korean Zombie have reached the judges scorecards. Typically, when we see these decision fighters, we're very inclined to associate them with the word boring. Fighters like Israel Adesanya, Bilal Muhammad, and Leon Edwards come to mind when talking about these fighters. But can Max Holloway be categorized among these guys? And the answer is no. No he can't. If we look at their strike output, you'll notice that Max Holloway has these guys beat by, on average, almost 4 significant strikes landed per minute. Or almost doubling their general output. Max is a different breed of decision fighter, and if you look at some of his opponents after their fights, it's obvious his hands aren't made of pillows either. Max Holloway doesn't have that one punch knockout power, but lock him in a ring against a fighter with limited 5 round fighting experience, and he'll more than likely deal more damage than that fighter has ever felt in his entire career. This creates a vicious cycle. Let me explain. Max Holloway became the UFC featherweight champion in 2016. And since that time, he hasn't fought in any MMA bout that wasn't scheduled for 5 rounds. And since that time, he lost his belt to Alexander Volkanovski, but still maintained his number 1 and now number 2 position in the featherweight rankings throughout those 7 years. So a title contender's mission is simple. Beat Max Holloway, get a title shot. Unfortunately for the contender, since Max is a former champion that stood the test of time and has a big name now, the UFC only schedules 5 round main or co-main events with him. And more unfortunately for the contender is that this is probably one of their only 5 round fights in the UFC. And they're doing it against the guy that's only been in these types of fights for the past 7 years. Guys, this is unfair. And unless you knock this guy out early, something that no one in Max's 28 fight UFC career has done to this day, you're gonna get stuck with him for the next 25 minutes. And with each passing minute, Max will add more and more strikes to his record. And, unless your name is Volkanovski, and maybe Teporia, you'll probably lose. Your title shot is gone, and Max Holloway will be ready to chew up yet another featherweight contender with limited 5 round fighting experience. Max Holloway's significant strike record is really an impressive feat. At this point, Max has been in the UFC for more than 12 years. In those 12 years, he's averaged over 114 significant strikes in his 28 fights, and to this day, has the perfect blend to continue distancing this record from everyone else. We're talking about someone whose strike output is great, defense is great, chin is great, cardio is great, and is still in some of the great years of his fighting career. With a lack of top young talent that can match the numbers Max had in his come up, breaking a significant strike record is more of a pipe dream now. Max Holloway is scheduled to fight Justin Gagey for the BMF belt at UFC 300. And if any of Max's previous fights are telling of what might happen, and if his chin still stands the test of time, then we're in for a treat. And another addition to Max's already impressive significant strike record. Any additional graphs that you see on screen right now will be available in the community post. If you like the content, you know what to do, and please be respectful in the comment section. And as always, Thanks everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.